All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to propose that this long-run equilibrium, this circumstance where our actual output in the economy is equal to the possible output in the economy, I'm going to propose that long-run equilibrium is the ideal state of the macro economy, that this is where we should want to be, that as we make decisions about the economy or as, as leaders of the economy make decisions, that they should be, now this is normative, okay, but it's based on what our three penultimate goals are, that the leaders of the economy should attempt to make, a, make decisions that move us back into long-run equilibrium when we are not in long-run equilibrium. And so I'm going to make some very, probably very loose arguments, but they're reasonable for a principles of economics class. Uh, what I've put here is I've got this triangle, so you should go ahead and draw this triangle. What I'm going to put on here is uh, our, th the, the, our measures of our three macroeconomic goals. Okay, so uh, to our, our measure uh, for whether we're achieving full employment is the unemployment rate, right? Okay, so unemployment rate. Uh, our, our measure for whether we are achieving uh, price level stability is the inflation rate. And our uh, measure for uh, whether we're achieving economic growth is real GDP. Okay, that's, that's output in the economy, right? All right, good. All right, so here's what we're going to say. The first thing I want to say is that when the economy is in long-run equilibrium, that means that our output that we are achieving is natural real GDP. The real GDP that we are actually uh, successfully producing is equal to our natural real GDP, our natural long-run state of output, the possible amount, our productive capacity. Okay, And what we said was this is we said that um, long-run aggregate supply, so long-run aggregate supply is the natural, it is at natural real GDP, and when that is equal to actual real GDP, then we are in long-run equilibrium. Now, I want to remind you that natural real GDP is the output in the economy that brings us the unemployment rate that is referred to as the natural rate of unemployment or the natural unemployment rate. Because what's happening here is this, is we are at the natural real GDP. We are using all of our factors of production to the best of their ability. We are using them to the best of their fulfillment. We're using our land to its best. We're using our capital to its best. And we are using our labor to its best. And when we are using our labor in the best way that we possibly can, isn't that the same thing as full employment? And it is because that is the natural, uh, that is the, the level of uh, employment that we're at or the level of the unemployment rate that is the natural unemployment rate. So over here, I'm going to say that when we are in long run equilibrium, we are also at the natural unemployment rate in the economy. And when we are at the natural unemployment rate, we have then achieved full employment. Okay, so, so my, my, the first thing that's going to that's gonna help my argument here is that when we are in long-run equilibrium in the economy, we will achieve one at least one of our three macroeconomic goals, which is full employment. Now, the next thing that I want to argue or the next thing I want to remind you is that there's another name for the natural unemployment rate. Now, I want to remind you a couple things about this natural unemployment rate. When the economy is at the natural rate of unemployment, we have zero 
cyclical unemployment. So 0% cyclical. We have some frictional and we have some structural unemployment. And remember that, that having that the frictional plus the structural unemployment is the unemployment that we have when we are at full employment. And when we're at full employment, we don't have any cyclical. And what that means is that uh, at full employment, that there are some jobs available, number of jobs, there are some jobs, job openings, and that that number is equal to the number of unemployed. So the number of people who are not working is equal to the number of jobs available. So really, we just need time and training to get those people into the jobs. That's full employment. I just wanted to, as an aside, remind you what full employment means in the economy and that it does not mean that everyone is working. And I want to also remind you that typically we, um, well, many experts believe that about 4% is a good level of unemployment, and about 4% is where we say uh, is the natural rate of unemployment. Now, uh, honestly, obviously, we don't know precisely what that number is, but we believe that it's about 4%. But that there's another name for the natural rate of unemployment. Before we learned it as the natural rate of unemployment, we learned it as N A I R. You. When we first learned about unemployment several lessons ago, we learned about NAIRU, which gives us, the, is, that's the level of unemployment, the unemployment rate that gives us full employment. So that's the same thing as the natural unemployment rate. Now, I want to talk about what NAIRU stands for. What does NAI stand for? NAI, well, RU stands for rate of unemployment. But NAI stands for the non-accelerating inflation. Non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Remember how we said that unemployment, the unemployment rate and the inflation rate are oppositely related to each other, that when unemployment is low, inflation will be high, and when, an, and when unemployment is high, inflation will be low, well, lower, okay? Well, there is a middle unemployment rate where inflation is neither high nor low. In fact, there's an unemployment rate where the inflation rate will be stable. Stable. That means price level stability. Not non-accelerating inflation means that inflation is not accelerating. Well, if you know anything about physics, you'll know that when something is not accelerating, that means that its speed is not changing. And therefore, non-accelerating inflation means that the inflation rate is staying right about where it's supposed to be or right about where it was. And when the inflation rate stays stable, let's say at 2% or 3%, that means that it is not accelerating. And so when we're at the unemployment rate such that inflation is not accelerating, that means inflation is stable. And we have stable inflation rate, which means price level stability. And that is our second macroeconomic goal. So now, at in long-run equilibrium, when actual output in the economy is at the natural rate, or the, the natural real GDP, at our uh, optimal possible output, we are now achieving two of our three macroeconomic goals. We're achieving full employment and price level stability. And so now, all we need to do is figure out if this rate uh, or this level of economic output, does it give us uh, our, third possible, or our third economic goal, which is economic growth, okay? And I'm going to show you, in my opinion, uh, and based on 
this information here that under a particular circumstance, we will achieve economic growth when we are in long run equilibrium. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions. Okay, so here's the question. The question is whether we are going to achieve economic growth when we are in long run equilibrium. All right, so I'm gonna make two assumptions. And the first one is this, is that in the, this economy, in our economy, or in the economy in question, first of all, the stock of factors is increasing. So this economy is accumulating more factors of production in quantity, a higher quantity of land, a higher quantity of labor, and a higher quantity of capital. Our stock of factors is increasing. The second assumption is that the productivity of the factors that we have is also increasing. Okay. So our stock of factors is increasing and the productivity of those factors is increasing. And my conclusion is that if, if our stock of factors is increasing and if our productivity of factors is increasing, then our productive capacity is increasing. And if our productive capacity is increasing, then our long run real GDP or our long run aggregate supply is increasing. So that means that the long run aggregate supply curve is moving, is moving to the right. It's moving rightward on the aggregate market graph. And when long run aggregate supply moves to the right, that means that natural real GDP is also increasing. Our possible output, the amount that we can possibly produce, is getting larger over time, slowly and incrementally, but it is increasing over time. And so what's happening is this, is as we increase the, the amount of factors of production we have, and as their productivity increases, we have a higher productive capacity, and this curve right here is going to move rightward. But in order to stay in long-run equilibrium, so if this long-run aggregate supply curve moves to the right, let's say it's now over here, we're going to call that LRAS prime, we have a new long run aggregate supply curve, but in order to stay in long run equilibrium, the short run aggregate supply curve is also going to have to move to the right, and the aggregate demand curve is also going to have to move to the right, such that we are still, that's AD prime and SRAS prime. So to stay in long run equilibrium, the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve are also going to have to move to the right with the long run aggregate supply curve. And we are still in long run equilibrium. Additionally, real GDP, this is our old GDP, okay? Real GDP has now moved upward and we now have an increase in real GDP. And that means that we have achieved our third macroeconomic goal, economic growth. And so I'm going to say one more time in conclusion that when we, when we make decisions to try and keep our economy in long run equilibrium, the output and the, ec the economic growth may not grow as fast as we want it to because we always want more, 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 more because of scarcity. We always want, we have an unlimited number of wants. We will always want to be more satisfied than we are right now. But if we go along with the, per the, the slow growth of the productive capacity, long run equilibrium will give us full employment, 
price level stability, and economic growth.